Hey there, this is Lucius LaFramboise from ENG Suite, and today we are going to be starting to learn about ranges. So for a while we've been learning about application.inputbox, now we're going to go into the basics of ranges, that way we can start to use all of the basic information about VBA to make some really, really cool stuff happen. So the first thing that we're going to want to do with our range is we need to create a range object. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to dimension a cell. So right away, we're just going to look at a cell to get started. And we'll dim that as a range. So then what we're going to do is we're going to set cell equal to active sheet dot range. And then we're going to type in these quotation marks here, the um, cell address. So right now, I'm just going to pull cell A1. And we're not really doing anything with this cell right now. So the first thing that I'm probably going to want to do is just message box something to show that we're actually grabbing that cell. So I'm going to say message box. And I'm going to say cell dot. And I'll do address. So address will just give me the cell address or the range address of whatever this range is here. So if we run this, we're going to get A1. Awesome. That is exactly what we were looking for. So now we have created our cell. But I want to show you something, and this is something you might run into quite often. So if we don't have this set here, you'll be running your code, and you see runtime error 91, object variable or with block variable not set. So if you get something like this, you're going to want to check around where you're setting some sort of range or chart, um, chart value. And you're going to make sure that you want to do set. Um, that's going to fix that error right away. So now if we run our code again, we no longer get that error because all it was asking is if we would please just put in set. All right, that's it for creating a range. All right, so another thing that can be really, really helpful in Excel is to be able to read the column and the row. Now I'm putting these here together because they're very related. You're going to see column and row stuff happening a lot together. Generally, if you need one, you're probably going to use the other as well. So the first thing we want to do here is read our column. I'm starting with column because it is alphabetical order, but don't worry, that will have no impact. They're basically the same um, properties. So I'm going to say column is and, and then we're going to take our cell again, and we're just going to type in column. Let's take a look at what this looks like. We hit run, column one. Awesome. We knew it was going to be column one because we are in A, the column, column A. So now if we take our row, so read row, as I said, I'm just going to copy this down because it's pretty simple. We're just going to replace row there with row. And let's try that. There we go, column one, row one. Awesome, if we change this to like, let's say C2, and then we rerun it, we get column three. So let's double check that. One, two, three, yep, column three. And then we get row two, one, two. Awesome, that is how you read your column and row addresses as numbers out of Excel VBA. So the last thing that we're gonna take a look here in terms of cell information um, is gonna be has formula. And so has formula does exactly what it sounds like it does. It tells you whether or not that cell has a formula. So the reason I'm including this in single cell information is this is where it's going to be mostly useful. So you're probably going to use it to um, determine whether or not the cell has a formula in it. Um, that way you're not overriding things that have formulas. It's really more of an error checking and um, preventive measure thing than it is going to be super useful in um, large scale macros. So let's take a look. So the first thing we want to do here is message box. And we want a message box has formula because we want to make sure that we're printing out the result. Um, and it's super simple. It's just cell dot has formula. And then we hit run has formula false. OK, awesome. Let's say we want to have a formula. So let's go to J2 um, and let's go into that J2. Oh, I guess that is included. So let's go back in here, and let's say L2. OK. And then we're going to head back in here, L2, and we'll say equals um, 1 plus 1. And then now if we run our 
our macro has formula true. So it just determines whether or not there is a formula in that cell. Again, it's not the most useful thing in the world, but it's really easy and it could save you um, a lot of errors. So we have finished off our cell information. Um, we're really looking at things that are going to be useful when dealing with a single cell. Um, that really plays in nicely to this range information section that we have. Now all of these, that single cell and a range, they're both a range object. So all of these properties exist on both. I just split it up this way because generally you're going to be using the top ones on a single cell and these next ones on a range. Um, and if you're using the range, you'll probably end up going through each cell and using the cell information stuff. That's why we covered it first. Okay, so here we are in range and we need to grab ourselves a range. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to say dim range as range. And then again, we have to set range equal to, we'll say active sheet dot range. And I believe we have A1 to J5. All right, let's go take a look because what we want to do is we want to grab, I'll show you. We want to grab this whole um, thing. We have everything in here, R1, C1, R1, C2. Everything, um, each of these cells has a, has a value in it that is telling us the location. That way we can make sure when we're looping things, we know what direction we're going and we know that we are getting everything. So we've got that whole thing, A1 to J5. And we come back in here, and now we've got to do some things with our range. So the first thing that we might want to learn, something simple, is we want to get, oops, we want to get the total count. This is really easy. Again, I want to message box it that way. We know that we're actually pulling a value and we can see it. So we'll do total count and range dot count. That's it. All right, let's run it. And we have a count of 50. We have 10 columns by five rows. 50 sounds exactly right. Awesome. Okay, so now that we have the total count, that's pretty nice. Um, we can do a lot of great, great things with that. Um, but let's say we want to loop through every cell. We want to do something with the cells. Um, let's say you want to turn those cells from a range object into an array, which is something that we will do later. Um, that's a very important function for doing a lot of great things. But first we have to know how to iterate through each of those cells. So here we are going to loop through each cell. We are going to use our good friend, the for each loop, and we're gonna say for each cell in range dot cells. So that range dot cells returns a range that contains all of the cells. So um, it's, it returns like an array of those cells that we can then loop through and do some amazing things. Now to end our for each loop, we put next. Okay, so now in here, we are gonna do something with each cell. And what I wanna do for now is just message box cell dot value because each of those cells <coughs> in this range dot cells is a cell. So cell information here, we could take the address, column, row, formula. I wanna do value. Now we haven't looked into that yet. That is in our later series, um, our later complete guide, when we talk about actually modifying them. But cells.value cell .value will give you the value of that cell, and then we can message box that out. So let's take a look. Get in there, now that we just run. R1C1, R1C2, R1C3, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. R2. So what you might be noticing is that we are actually looping through each row by column. So we go through each row first. Um, and that's kind of um, an important next step because what let's say that you actually have your data instead of separated into individual rows, you have it in columns because that's generally how, um, how we set up our Excel workbooks. We have different dimensions or, or different um, categories in each column and the data for each category is going down each row. So the data is vertical. Now that can be really, really important because what we wanna do here is, let's say we actually want to keep each of those columns separate and we wanna calculate like an average for each column. What we're gonna to wanna to do 
is change the way that we are looping through our cells. So we know that loop through each cell, each row individually, right? So each row individually. Um, we want to loop through, loop through each column individually. So what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to do another for each. And in this time, we're going to say for each column in range dot columns. And then next. So let's see what we're actually doing when we're looping through. What are these columns? So I'm going to message box call dot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do address because what it's really doing is each of these columns, this in this range dot columns, each call is another range that represents that column. Let's take a look at what I mean here. So we have A1 through A5. That's that column. Then we have B1 through B5, C1 through C5, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. Okay, so now we know that each of these calls, so here I'll do this, each call is its own range object. So we can modify that, we can use that call as a range object. So one thing we could do is we could definitely do a for each, you know, cell in call.cells, but let's try something else. Let's do it by, by row, because we've already done it by column, let's stay consistent, it's better practice to do this. Um, our code is a little bit more, um, more readable here. We're gonna say for each cell in range dot in Oops, call dot rows. Then we're going to do next to end it. And in here, we're going to message box cell dot value again. Okay, so now let's see what happens as we are cycling through. So you notice row one, C one, row two, C one. We're still in column one. Now we're going to jump to column two. We're going to hit every row in column two, then to three. And as you can see, we have now successfully been able to loop through each column individually, and then we could handle the data however we wanted, um, likely by taking an average or calculating some sort of um, statistic or just modifying that column individually. So that is pretty much everything I wanted to cover in our basic introduction, everything you need to know about range to get started using it. Next time we're going to start modifying. So this was all about range information. Next time we're going to modify. And then after that, we are going to take a look at actually changing the formats, changing your data formats, changing your styling. That will be an incredibly ten intense one. Um, but now you know how to get all the information you need from your ranges. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and please do something awesome.